How many times has this ever happened to you? You have a light, you turn it on, and nothing happens. Or it happens when it wants to happen. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. It just does what it wants to do whenever it wants to do it, but it never wants to do it when you need it. But it always does it when you don't want it, if you know what I'm saying. Have you ever been there? I'm sure you have. Well, the problem could be caused by many things, but in this case, I have isolated it to this little gadget right here, this right here, this. Now, I know that because the power cord runs down here, it exits right here, and I wiggle this, nothing happens there. I gently wiggle this, no change there. The problem is not from the outlet to here. We know that, don't we? Can we deduce that now? I think we can. So, what is the logical explanation? Maybe it could be, oh, a contact here underneath the bulb. Well, guess what, folks? I already tried that, and it doesn't change anything. It still does not work reliably. See that? Look at there. Look. Just bump the bulb a little bit. See that? The problem is in the switch right here. We're going to do something today that a lot of you don't even care to watch because you know how to do it all already. You know what I'm saying? This is for people who have this problem and who've had it for a long time and have been just busting their tail trying to figure out how to control it and they don't know how. I want to help you out, folks. So, for those of you who are not knowing how to do this, stick around. For those of you who are old hats at this, get out of here. Go on. Go find another channel to watch. Or stay tuned and enjoy the show. Hey folks, I just want to know how many of you have ever experienced this problem where you have a light like this one here and you turn it on and nothing happens. Turn it on. Oh, it turned on. Surprise. Oh, it's not always on. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. It's intermittent. And the problem with this is it's only on when it wants to be on. It's never on when you need it to be on and it's always off when you want it to be on and it's sometimes on when you don't want it to be on. Does that make sense? Have you been there? Are you there now? Guess what? I'm going to help you fix this problem. So folks, if you're in this situation and you don't know what to do, stick around and watch the video. Those of you who are old hats at this thing, you know, you, you know everything there is to know in the world. You don't have to watch this video. Go somewhere else. Find another video to watch, okay? But uh, for those of you who need help, I'm here to help you right now. Let's get started. Something was supposed to happen there. I'm not sure what. Okay, now... Ah, uh, all right, what are we gonna do? Well, first of all, this can be caused by a number of problems. In this particular case, we have a cord going in down here. If I gently wiggle this cord, we notice nothing changes, the light stays on. If I wiggle that cord back here at the receptacle, very gently, the light stays on. The problem is not in the cord, at least not from here to there, however, we still have this problem where this light bulb just wants to turn on and off all by its lonesome. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, I know what it is. Just take the light bulb out and bend a little contact up on the inside. Well, guess what, folks? I've already done that. Now, if you're going to do that, make sure you unplug it. Okay. Now, there are some contacts in here. There's one contact right in the center there. You can grab a little screwdriver and try to pry that up a little bit. I've already done that, folks. Didn't help. The problem I'm having is right here in the socket. This socket right here with the switch in it is intermittent. That means, look it up. Anyway, so, uh, all right. I'm gonna leave it unplugged because we're gonna fix this thing right now. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this old aluminum socket with a brand new phenolic lamp socket. I don't know what phenolic means. Actually, I do, but I don't wanna explain it. Okay, go look it up, phenolic, Google it. All right, now. This particular one, phenolic just means that it's insulated. It's, it's non-metallic, okay? It's made out of this phenolic material. Now, 
I'm going to replace this aluminum one with this phenolic one. We're going to do that right now. Let's do it. Let's get started, shall we? Okay, here we go. First things first, we'll take this. Make sure you unplug it. Always unplug, folks. It just makes sense. Take the light bulb out. In this case, I have to take the light bulb off to get this reflector out. Get rid of that. Now, what we're left here, this oh, see how easy that was? These old aluminum ones, they're just kind of like wedged in there. They just sort of have these little tabs that catch the bottom of it. So they're real easy to take apart. Once that's apart like that, you can actually slip this aluminum part right off of there. Sometimes this inside insulation will stay behind like that. Just go ahead and peel it off. Now we're exposing the screws. Notice there's a silver screw, there's a brass screw. Very important, I'll tell you why in a minute. Let's go ahead and take this thing off. Just take the screws loose. Just like that. Blammo, it's done. Now, you wanna dress these wires up real nice. Go ahead and just give them a little twist, tug on them. Get them so that they're like nice and cleaned up, no frays, no stray little wires coming out of there. Now, some people would say you should probably solder those, or the technical term would be you should tin those wires before you put them in. That's cool. You can do that if you want. It's a little extra time, but I don't advise it because when you solder those wires, um, that solder tends to get compressed under the head of the screw. and through a couple seasonal changes in temperature, you'll get some contraction and expansion and eventually they will not make a good connection. So don't solder them. So let's just leave them as bare wires as we see them right here, right now. Lock it in. Okay, now, um, all right, we're unplugged. Wires exposed. Oh, another thing. This zip cord or lamp cord as they call it, is comprised of two insulated conductors. One is a neutral, conductor. The other one is the hot conductor or the hot conductor. Now, um, the neutral is identified by these little stripes. It's, I call it a serration. I don't know what the technical term is for it. And the hot side is just, just has a plain old shiny plastic insulation surface. Okay. So you want to make sure you know the difference. Now, this is a non-polarized plug, meaning you can plug it in this way or you can flip it and plug it in that way. It's not polarized, it doesn't matter. So really this whole color coding thing and getting the stripes and all that stuff in the right position, it's all more technical than anything else when you're dealing with a non-polarized system such as this. Now, but technically, the one with the little stripes on it, that should be neutral. That should go to the widest lug on your outlet. If you notice, if you take a good look at your outlets, there's a, there's a wide hole and there's a narrow hole. The wide one is your return or your neutral. The narrow one is your hot. They're color coded as white and brass, silver and brass. Silver is neutral, brass is hot. Brass is hot. Remember that, brass is hot. Brass resembles fire and flame, hot, heat, and all that jazz. Where were we? Okay, so now. Don't plug it in. No, don't ever plug it in when you have this situation going on right here. This is very dangerous. Now we have to take this little base off. There is a screw right here that is coming out. We're not going to take the screw out. We're just going to loosen it because it's clamping in against the threads. Now we can just unthread this. Now your light fixture may have a brass, you know, say it's a lamp with a shade. It'll have a brass stem on it. This screws on just the same way, just like that. Poof, take it put it away. It's done. Now we are back to uh, the beginning. Now we're going to take the phenolic. We're going to disassemble it. We're going to take this top piece, set it aside right over there. Take this piece and just pull it out. Take this piece right here and hold it in your left hand like this and look at it. I don't know why we do that, but anyway, okay. So now <clears throat> we put these wires through the hole on this piece of phenolic. And there is a threaded base to this. We're going to thread this back on. Just like these wires are getting stuck in the hole there. So get this threaded back on. Just like that. Snug this screw up. Don't over tighten this screw. You'll crack the phenolic for Pete's sake. And you know what? Nobody likes a cracked phenolic. There we go. Now, 
Make sure your wires are nice and dressed and purty. They need to look purty, folks. All right. Now, okay, these are actually a little bit long, but we can work with this. If you want to, though, you can cut them back a little bit. Let's just do that. These are dull. Hang on a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach way over here. <coughs> Grab these. My little sharper dikes. Side cutters. All right, here we go. I'm just going to cut that off a little bit just to trim them up nice. There. All right. And folks, if you don't have side cutters like that, you can use fingernail clippers or whatever. Just can't use those on your toes when you're done. Now, uh, let's see. Okay, now the next thing is we're going to take this piece. Now notice, brass, silver, neutral, hot. Make sure these screws are turned out all the way. They should not fall out. They're sort of captive in there, so you can turn them out until it stops turning. All right, and now what we want to do is we want to take the non-corrugated side or the corrugated side, whichever way you want to start. I can't see which one's which here. Let's see. Here's the corrugated side, and we're going to put a little band in it, just like that. See that, folks? Little bend in it like that, sort of preform it. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and lay that underneath the screw head, just like that. While that's being held in position, take your screwdriver. You can use a Phillips or flathead on these. They're made to take either one, and just snug it up. Okay, that's snugged up. Now we're going to do the same thing with this brass screw. So it's a little easier, I find, to go ahead and put a bend in it before you try to wrap it around the screw. So there we go. Tighten the screw. Don't be a gorilla, folks. You don't need to over tighten this stuff. You really don't. You need it snug, and that's about it. Okay, gently push this down into its position, like that. Take the top phenolic piece, thread it on like that, and voila! Uh, in my case, I need to put this little reflector on. Your case, it might be totally different. So just put this back on. Let's see what happens here. Maybe what I'll do is thread this in here first. Oh yeah, much better idea. There we go. There we go. Now I can put this piece back on top like that. And we are done with that part of it, folks. Let's see what happens. I'm going to take the light bulb right here, screw it in. Don't have to go too tight with that either, just snug, okay? We're going to plug it in over here, non-polarized. When I turn this switch, folks, we should see light, light, darkness, light, darkness, light. When I wiggle the lamp around, it stays lit. Folks, this unreliable, undependable, worthless piece of junk that it was is now very valuable to me. And it will be valuable to you if you will follow these same instructions, folks. Be safe. Don't do weird things, okay? Don't touch bare wires while they're plugged in over there and all that kind of crap. Did I say crap? Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> and all that kind of stuff. Now, uh, I don't think I have anything else to say, folks. Thanks for sticking around. I hope I was able to help you. I hope I was able to get your head on straight. I hope that you are now feeling glorious and fantastic. I hope that you are feeling that your life is now meaningful and has purpose. All of that because you know how to change a lamp socket. See you folks. Adios. Bye.